from the American Geographical Society is called The Origin of the Name America. Again, the source would be the Journal of the American Geographical Society of New York, volume 20, 1888, pages 183 to 196. The Christian name of Vespucci is Alberigo. Okay. All right. So we're about to get into Vespucci now. All right. Again, the real Christian name of Vespucci is Alberigo. Alberigo. In Italian and in Spanish, albericus in Latin, I albericus. So this is Albert, actually, Albert. Alberigo and albericus is Albert. Nothing to do with America, right? It says three, no other name has ever been subjected to so many variations and combinations, whether deliberate or unconscious, as the name of Vespucci. There is no parallel instance in the history of distinguished men, except in the name albergo. Not one of the names is found in the nomenclature of the calendars of the Italian and Spanish saints. Although Vespucci lived at the time of the greatest fervor and the absolute supremacy of Roman Catholic Christianity. All right, you hear what they're telling you, right? Finally, not one of these names, Americus, Amerigo, 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 Americo, Almerigo, Albertutio, Almerico, Morigo, Tamerigo, Armenico, Americ, I Americ, Almeric, and Americ is a diminutive or an accepted form either in Italy or in Spain or in France for Alberico, Albericus, and Alberic, Alberic or Albert. All right. So they're telling you that these names, if if it was his name, Amerigo, right? If they're trying to say, well, it's different in a different language than Albert. Albert is Amerigo. No, it's not. All right. It is not. It's not, it doesn't translate to Albert, all right? That was his name. So his name has nothing to do with America, all right? That's this. That's close case right there. We shouldn't even be having this discussion, but we have to, right? Because everybody's still talking about Vespucci. Now, before 1507, the date of the publication of the name Americus by Jean Basin at St. Dieu, the name is not to be found in any printed document nor in any manuscript document of recognized and unquestionable authenticity. All right, so they're saying that his name, Americus, or, or linked anything to Vespucci does not appear printed anywhere before 1507, because at 1507 is when they came out with this map, right, that has the word America on South America, a little piece of South America that's sticking out. All right, and that's, that's when it came out. So before that, there's nothing stating that you know, Vespucci is America's or, or relating that word anywhere with him. The annual report of the Board of Regents of the Smithsonian Institute showing the operations, expenditures, and condition of the institution, July 1888. There's like a report in here. And it says here, Amerique, Amerigo Vespucci in America by Jules Marco. First voyage of Vespucci. From the beginning, we are confronted by the most contested of Vespucci's voyages, May 1497 to October 1498. Las Casas, Herrera, Charlevoix, Robertson, Tiraboshi, Munoz, Navarrete, and Washington Irvin declare that the author of the Quatuor Navigaciones has forced his first voyage. All right, we got this before. All right, so uh, basically Vespucci um, supposedly made two voyages 
but on the first voice it seems like it was fraudulent it wasn't real or he didn't really land on the on the on the firm land or south america he only did that on the second voyage right and all these authors historic authors are confirming this right that he forced his first voyage all right alexander the humble now we read alexander the humble what he said after calling his so-called first voyage pretendu tries to show an alibi for Vespucci, who according to his opinion was then in Sevilla and at San Lucar superintending the arming of a fleet for the third voyage of Christopher Columbus from April 1497 to 1498. And accordingly, a material of impossibility of having then accomplished his first voyage, which finally he calls problematic voyage of a contested date. Admitting as proof that the date of May 10th or 20, 1497 is false, right? Vespucci was never there before Columbus anyway. That's what they're trying to show you here. He made two, supposedly two voyages, and uh, it seems like he only really went, the real one was the second one, all right? However, unbeknownst to most, Vespucci was not named Amerigo until after the naming of the New World on Walt C. Muller's map. As writer Jan R. Carew records, El Barrigo Vespucci and I deliberately use his authentic Christian name, a Florentine dilettante and rascal, corrected Columbus's error. Vespucci declared that what Columbus had indeed stumbled on was a new world. El Barrigo was undoubtedly a Florentine dilettante and an extraordinarily clever one. Why would he otherwise have changed his Christian name after his voyage to the Americas? In other words, writes author Steve Quayle in his book, True Legends, the new world wasn't named after the mapmaker, but rather the mapmaker Vespucci named himself after the new world. And his friends and historians then claimed that the Americas were named after him. One of those claims came from a Florentine bishop of the time who boasted in a letter. And well may our new world be named America, since its discovery was due to our eminent countryman, Amerigo Vespucci. This singular line from the bishop's letter has been touted by historians as proof that America was named after Vespucci. But aside from changing his name to match Walt C. Muller's map, there are many other compelling arguments against America being named after Amerigo Vespucci. For starters, even if they had intended to name the New World after him, it is highly unlikely that Waltzi Muller and Ringman would have used Vespucci's first name instead of his last. As historian Alexander Del Mar notes, had there been any intention to name the continent after Vespucci, his surname would have been used so that the result would have been something like Vespugia instead of Amerigo. In short, there seems to be very little room to doubt that the world has been misled through the complimentary notice of the Florentine bishop who claimed the new world was named after Vespucci. The name Amerigo, or Amerigo, or Amerige, which are the three variations in spelling known until 1507 would give in Latin Amerigonius, Amerigius, Amerigo, or even Amerige, but not Americas, all right? Those names would not give Americas. Gene Basson in making such a lapsus linga must have been influenced and entirely directed by the aboriginal name of Amerique, which reached Europe four years before. So not only Amerique was over in Europe, but also the word Amaraca, Amaraca, Amaru, Amaraca. Pana, the land, the country of Amaraca. So Amarik and Amaraca were over there already, which reached Europe four years before and had time to spread as a name of a country and a tribe of Indians rich in gold. For in 1503, Colombo and his 150 seamen returned from Cariai and Carambaru on the Mosquito Coast. Continuing says the name America. The name was not accidentally created in the Vosges, as the humble thought. But the application to Vespucci of the indigenous name Amerique was wrongly made there. The name is not a creation of the Volscian gymnasium, but only an er erroneous assimilation to the Christian name of a man having some similarity with it. Against all the rules of priority, of discovery, and of naming a great country and using the Christian name of a pilot, piloto, instead of his family name, 
After the mistake had been made, Vespucci took care to make it good by altering the autography of his Christian name, changing his signature of 1492 Amerigo into Amerigo with two R's after 1507 and until his death. All the discussions among Americanists come entirely from their ignorance of the existence of a tribe of Indians who called themselves the Americas, Americs, Tamarik, Tamaru, Amarukan, Americans, Americans, all right? So it's because of the ignorance of the existence of this tribe of Indians and who inhabit the Sierra Americe and the country rich in gold between Lake Nicaragua and the Mosquito Coast. They were confronted by such difficulties that it is true chaos of dates, names, pretensions of all sorts, patriotic rivalries and futile explanations unworthy of the characters and profound signs of some of their number. All right. So he's talking about how he was able to basically determine that, you know, this that America was pushy. You know, his name had nothing to do with the word America, which he was able to find an indigenous tribe named Amerisque and the Amerisque Mountains. And that seems more like a possible um, origin of the name. And we know it is, um, you know, we know it's connected to the Amara Capana, Amaru people, because it's all one kingdom, Central America and South America, the Amaru, Quetzalcoatl, Amaru, Plum Serpent. Mm -hmm.